call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order. I'm going to ask uh, uh, David Johnson to come forward and uh, lead us in a uh, prayer and a pledge to the flag, and then we'll back up and get our public hearing. Bow with me, please. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for many, many blessings. Dear Lord, I thank you for David Johnston and all of our magistrates, and I ask, dear Lord, that you would guide them as they make decisions for Ohio County. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. So much appreciate everybody for coming. Uh, we have to do every year uh, call the public hearing on the CRA, that's the county road aid, and the LGEA, which is the local government economic assistance fund. We have to, uh, we're doing a, uh, a, a public hearing. Anyway, if anybody had anything to address, either one of those funds, they could do so at, uh, at the public hearing. But, uh, uh, Ann, could you tell us the total of the CRA and the LGEA? The county road aid projected is $1,677,220, and our co-severance fund is zero. We are now non-producing. Yeah. I guess it's... Anybody had any ideas on what we do with nothing? <laughs> that would be it, but we have to have that public hearing. Are we not getting any this year? Uh, we don't get the LGEA funds. That's the quarterly. We get the house bill. The DF funds. The DF funds. That's where we set those two line, the line items for two year period. Yes. Yeah. Well, we don't do it that way anymore. Yeah. That's fine. Now we, 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 we look at it after we get it. <coughs> yeah. Uh, but if, the, if there's no comments, I'll say that this public hearing is adjourned and we'll move on to our uh, other business. First, next first thing on the agenda then is to approve the March 14, 2023 meeting minutes. I made a motion. Motion. Second. Uh, Larry, Larry Morphew and Jason Bull. Uh, is there any discussion, correction, or additions to the minutes? Any discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including a late list. Need a motion on that. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion for Jason. Second by Bo. Uh, is there any discussion on the bills, claims? Any discussion on the bills? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Next, we have the first reading of the 2023-24 uh, budget, which is Ordinance 2023-7. Now asking for a motion to approve the first reading. So moved. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Michael McKinney. Is there any discussion at this time or anything that you want to say about the uh, budget? How long does it have to be gone for the state for it to come back for the second? It, 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 I'm hoping we'll be able to do it this same time next month. We, we'll send it off tomorrow. And, uh, it, and by getting us in, in there early, I think it will be pretty quick. Uh, no more discussion. Roll call, Miranda. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnston? Yes. So the first reading of the budget is, uh, is approved. It will go to the state for their review. When it comes back, we'll be advertising, and we will have a public hearing before the second reading of, of the budget. You sign it. And I want to thank you guys for helping and, and working this out where we're, we're this far along on the budget. Um, 
we, we need to pass our uh, uh, next fiscal year standing orders, and that's the bills that are paid with uh, that, that we don't have to say before the checks are written. Uh, help me out on telling uh, electric bills, phone bills, Pay credit wrong. cards. Payroll, health insurance, not credit cards. Not credit cards. No. Um, the only two things that are uh, other than that are we have a line in both the general and road fund to license and title the vehicle. And uh, there's only 250. I was kidding about the credit card. <coughs> that was a I'll make a motion to. How many uh, different uh, utility electrics do we deal with? Uh, probably in excess of 125. Oh, I thought he meant cup. I meant cup like a Thor W oh. or uh, one rule and like that. Probably five or six. We have one rule. Yeah. We have Kennedy, K U, and uh, Mead County yeah. is our electric company. And the waters, we have East Davis County and then the cities. And yeah, yeah. both cities county. and in uh, and the county. Warney or uh, East, Warren. Warren, East Davis or Warren. <laughs> yeah, the Fordsville Park is on that up there. Okay. Um, go ahead and, and uh, do I have I'll a make a motion to accept the standing order of 2023, 2023 20, 24. Okay, do you hear a second? I'll second. Second by Bo Bennett. Uh, is there any for other questions on that? Any further questions? Uh, being none, uh, go ahead and uh, and roll call that. It's adding thing. Mark you? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. So that the standing orders are approved. The next Best kind of just one more time. Yeah. <laughs> well, the financial report we got to do it. I'll make a motion to uh, acknowledge. I'll just acknowledge you see the. I know, I know what she was going to talk talk to us about oh, that. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Let's do the acknowledge it. Then I'll introduce her. Motion by. I'll, I'll acknowledge we got the clerk's uh, February 2023 financial report. Here, second. I second. Second by Lane Murphy. All, uh, any discussion or questions for Bass? <laughs> if not, all in favor say aye. Yeah. Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Next, I want to introduce the best looking and the smartest county court clerk in the state of Kentucky, probably the whole world, Miss Bess Rapp. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can you hear me? Can you really hear me? I don't like the mic. So in February, I was here for a resolution. I think we all remember uh, for House Bill 1 had uh, opened up the grant money for us to get equipment for election. I put you a little form up there this time to kind of help you maybe understand what we're doing. I need the same. It's a different res resolution. I need it signed again ahead of time so we can go ahead and apply for this money. So, Ohio County is eligible uh, from the House Bill 1, $135,875.45. So, what I want to purchase is what they call a print-on-demand printers, and I'll explain to you what that does. You know, when you go to the voting centers now, the uh, ballot judges give you a ballot, right? So this won't happen. I won't be able to get this equipment set up and ready until the general election. But when you go to your voting center, then we will have a printer, a scanner, and that will scan out that ballot for you at that time. What that will do, save money on waste of papers, because I have to pretty much, we had to guess to how many ballots we need to go all over to our voting centers. So that will cut down costs there. And mostly for me, it's going to cut down uh, mistakes because you know we're all human we can get a wrong ballot but this way it'll all be barcoded and they'll get their ballot so to get 20 of those uh, which is what we'll need for all six of our voting centers it will cost hundred and thirty two thousand and four hundred and fifty dollars 
So if you remember in February, y'all purchased for the election department, uh, they were called auto ballot kits. Do y'all remember that, what we got? It cost $3,693 for those. So I have an excess of $3,425.45 left out of the 135. So I was going to ask for a reimbursement of that money where y'all purchased that to get that money back for the county, okay? So the only difference will be uh, is $26, I'm sorry, $267.55. So those auto kits that you purchased in February, they're actually going to end up only costing the county $267.55. So in order for me to get this rolling and get all this done, if y'all sign the resolution like we did last time, I'll get it turned in. Just a little friendly reminder, last time, Ohio County was the first to get that big amount of money because of y'all helping me do that. And I'll do the same thing this time. I'll get it right in, and hopefully we'll get it. I don't think we've ever got the bill for the other equipment yet, right? Still on interest, so we'll do the same if you'll help me out. I appreciate it. Will that excess money go into the general fund, or? No, say that again? With the excess money, where will it go? What excess money? That you was getting three thousand something. Extra. The thirty-four twenty-five. No. That are. Say it again. Three thousand four hundred twenty-five dollars. That's what's back. left over. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask for the reimbursement to what y'all paid for in February for the auto ballot kits. Y'all have already paid for those, purchased those. You paid three thousand six hundred ninety-three dollars. <laughs> We're going to get that money back. So it, where will it go? It will go on the general fund. Okay. Okay. But so actually, that equipment only cost the county two hundred sixty-seven dollars. Wow. Now, great. I mean, I can get some other equipment, but I figure we'd be better to get that money back for y'all out of this we, fund. We like that. You like that? We good. And uh, we'll need to copy that resolution. I've got it all here. Honey. All right. All right. Ooh. All right. Thank you, you very much. Do you want them to sign it now? Well, that's I mean, up to you. Do you want to? Well, yeah, we need, I, I we need a motion, a second, and pass. I'll make a motion. Motion by Jason Bullock. I second. Second by Larry Morphew. Any, any further discussion or questions for Beth? The time we get $135,000. Yeah, I think you're right, Jason. We're not going to turn it down, are we? No, we're not going to turn it down. Uh, and let the record show that the 2023 23 Twenty twenty three. 2023 20 23 dash 23. That's all my paperwork in there, so when you get it signed, then I'll need it. Okay. okay. Thank that's, you. That's the number of the resolution we just uh, did. Okay, uh, roll call down. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnston? Yes. And that pass, and uh, Beth, thank you so much for all your hard work thank that you. you do on the elections. and. Uh, uh, and appreciate that uh, you've never had a hiccup with the with the election. Everything's gone smoothly, and and I, I know there's many communities that wish they could say that over the nation. Thank you. So I have to give credit to my staff and my coworkers. It's not all me, Judge, but it takes a lot of organization, but we we get it done. It does. I'm gonna ask Darren Luttrell to come to, to, and talk to us about the Salt Conservation Office. <coughs> I'll be real quick, um, just something that the uh, state conservation asks us to do once a year is just kind of give a report to our physical courts and uh, haven't been able to do it for a couple of years. So uh, uh, in uh, environmental quality incentives uh, program, uh, we've got obligated to the county uh, around $572,000 that's coming in uh, for various programs and the conservation stewardship program. Uh, roughly 118,000, and then the emergency watershed, watershed protection. I think Ryan's going to talk to you a little bit about that here in a little bit. But uh, 10 sites, four completed, uh, initial bids over a million dollars that'll be coming in. We get approximately $60,000 in revenue from the county and the millage tax, and uh, we've got one employee, uh, secretary, and then we've got a, another employee that works with the NRCS, uh, Ashlyn Air. She is what's called 75-25. We pay 25% of her uh, annual cost and uh, her salary and benefits. Federal government takes care of the rest. A few things we do. Um, we uh, received an environmental grant in March of 2021, 
and uh, in July of this year it will run out, but we received uh, $7,500, we contributed $2,500, uh, and we're using it for uh, uh, to trap beavers and uh, get rid of them in some of the low-lying fields and ditches that uh, cause problems. Uh, we contributed $1,500 this year to the drone that uh, I think you all contributed to for uh, emergency management. Um, for Ag Days uh, that all the fourth graders go to, uh, we did about $800 in giveaways plus a $600 donation. Uh, when our 4-H um, horticulture team went to the Nationals, uh, we donated $1,000 for that. We generally give about five thousand uh, dollars in uh, scholarships, a thousand dollars a piece to a student from Ohio County that's going into an agricultural program. Um, here in about uh, right after about two weeks uh, for a tree giveaway, we'll spend about a thousand dollars and give away about a thousand trees to anybody in the county that wants them. Um, we also have a seven-foot no-till drill, a ten-foot no-till drill that is leased to farmers in the county and we just purchased uh, about two months ago a lime spreader, about $34,000 lime spreader that will be leased to anyone in the county that wishes to use it. So uh, that's about <coughs> it. Any questions? I really appreciate it, dear. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, I don't have any questions. Do you guys have any questions for Darren? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Teach your father's house presentation. He's not going to go. He's going to leave you by yourself. No, He's not going to okay. come help. You. That's all right. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. You know what? I'm. We're. I say I'm, but we're Pentecostal people. We like microphones. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, all right. So my name is Jennifer Tishner, and I'm here to represent Father's House Recovery Center. I mean, we've been here before. We've all we've talked to you guys before in the past. A uh, uh, judge asked us to come along sometime here in, in March and give you guys an update. Um, so I'm going to just kind of start there. But So briefly, we opened September 12th. So we've been open just a little longer than six months now. Um, we have done intake on 32 clients in that time. Uh, 21 out of those 32 were Ohio Counties, local. Um, so currently, right now, we have 17 clients, which are all here with us tonight. You guys probably recognize some of them. <laughs> but, uh, and out of those 17, I believe 12 of those guys are local. Um, but anyway, because I know that's a big question there. We've, had, we've been asked that a lot. Like, are you guys just getting doing this for out of, you know. But, you know, we're open to any, of course. But we're working with the courts, our local courts here in Ohio County and the surrounding counties. Uh, honestly, it's probably more like the judges. So, you know, they cover more than just Ohio County, so, you know, they send, they send guys to us. And so we accept them all that qualify for our program. We've had tremendous success. We really, we, we haven't been open long enough to have a graduation yet, as of yet. We sort of, we're an 18-month program, so we're six months into an 18-month program. Okay. So, but we've had a lot of success. We've had, we, uh, you know, if you, if you guys don't mind, would you stand up if you're in Father's House program right now? So, so these gentlemen right here, it's just, it's just an unreal thing that we're witnessing here. It's, it's just miraculous. I'm just going to be honest with you. We've watched these men, their lives just transform right before our eyes over the last several months. Some are in phase three of our program. There's a couple in phase four. So, you know, there's, there are different levels of the program. All of them are. But they are doing, I mean, they're just, a, it's, a, it's been a tremendous blessing watching these guys' lives change. Thank you, guys. You can sit down. But, so we were asked, uh, Judge, I think you asked, uh, you asked us to give us, like if we could possibly give a specific number of the people in our program that struggle specifically with opioid use. And, uh, you know, honestly, that's a really difficult thing. Addiction is kind of wide, that's a wide range. And there's very, very few addicts that are in the state that these guys were in when they came to us that only struggled with this one substance. Um, so, but I did ask, and we did look back in some of our records and things, and three of the guys that didn't stay, that actually left the program early, were, were, were opioid users. Um, one in particular, 
uh, was going to withdraw from Suboxone. And uh, we had him an appointment at the detox clinic and he left before the appointment because he just couldn't stand it. Because, you know, once he came to us, of course, he, he had no more, he, no more Suboxone. So a few days into that, it was just so miserable for him, he just couldn't wait out, wait out the appointment at detox. So he left because of that. <coughs> but when I asked the, 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 the 19 guys we have right now, um, we asked them in one of our community meetings um, to raise their hand if they struggled with opioid, if that was one of their struggles in their addiction, and all the three raised their hand. So that's kind of the percentage that really is. To, so, you know, most of them, testify that it's kind of a gateway drug into the rest of it. Um, sometimes you start off with pain pills from a surgery or different, whatever the reason, and it just kind of escalates into other things. So it's kind of a beginning, it's really where that's at. I think you guys all know where we're going with this, but um, so in November, uh, a few of our uh, board, board members and myself, our, a couple of our directors, we went to the uh, uh, opioid abatement committee town hall meeting in Bowling Green uh, to get some information you know obviously and uh, we, we were actually given an opportunity to share with the committee you know our vision for Father's House and our mission and what we want to do and of course, this was in November so at that time we were had only been open for a month and we were advised and and they were really on board with us with the mission that we have for Father's House here in our county um, and anyway, so we, we had some conversations there that night with uh, Brian Hubbard, and uh, he advised us, you know, he kind of gave us the information that I put in this packet. I just want you guys to see that that's where we were getting all that from. Um, so Keiko, you know, that's, uh, that's who he, he pointed us to for following this opioid abatement money and settlement money. He said, you follow them and you'll see, you'll, you'll be able to tell when it's time. And he told us that to, in order to, I guess, you know, to utilize these funds for Father's House Recovery Center, he told us to come and knock on the door of our physical courts. So that's, we're knocking. That's, right. that's what we're here for tonight, we're knocking. Um, so anyway, um, of course, we went through all these things with him, and we have, we've been in touch with them off and on, on the, at the state level. Of course, they haven't done a lot at the state level yet, and I know you guys are pretty, just now kind of getting into what they're doing here, but the number that, that he gave us that Keiko has published for the counties is actually, uh, well, I mean, I think some of this you guys have already received, but in December, is that right? Am I right? I mean, I don't want to say something that's not right. Is that true? Okay. So, so the December that they have in there. But then there's another settlement that's come aboard, and it's kind of really just, it's almost doubled the state. I think you're probably aware of something. It's almost doubled what the state actually got hold of, so we're really excited about this money, as you guys can imagine. You know, we are a faith-based recovery center. We don't bill insurance. We don't have, you know, you are the government help that we get. That's it. No more. So we're excited about this money. We need it. We need some of it, and I think we more than qualify for some of it, but... I want to invite, first of all, I want to invite any of you guys, any of you guys on the court, at any given time, you give us a call, come by Father's House, we will walk you through this thing, we will nail it, we'll show you this program, right down to everything that we're doing there, and, and show you some of the results that we're, we're seeing already, and, you know, as young as we are in doing this, but we need funding, we need funding to finish up this project, to get this thing to where we can operate at full capacity, and, uh, uh, if you don't know already, there's we're only using we're not even using really half of our of our structure because it needs renovation, and um, we have been working on that as we can. Of course, we're new. Like I said, we've only been doing this for six months, so we're just now kind of getting things leveled off, and and we need some grant money and some things, some help to finish this renovate these buildings so that we can work at full capacity. And at that time, you know, not only will it enable us to expand our residential program, right now, like I said, we have 19 guys, and honestly, 20 is probably, we're probably gonna have to cut the, cut it right there for now, um, which is kind of sad because they're, we're getting phone calls every day. But we have 30 bunks, but we're trying to operate this thing out of a, a, just one facility, and it's really difficult. It's kind of tight right now. We don't want to make it, you know, we want this to be right. So we're, we may very well have to stop at 20 until we can finish, you know, the, the renovation on the building so that we can open this up and expand it and give them more room. But anyway, and that being said, this, 
this new facility, this other facility that we're working on, this will that will enable us to offer transitional living for these guys as they transition out of the program, which is extremely important. That's actually one of the areas that we were really, really trying to focus on. That's the area that seems to be where the ball gets dropped a lot of times in recovery is when they leave, you know, and, and we have we have the square footage there to offer all these things. It just needs work. And uh, so we're going to do that. We're also going to offer meetings and uh, services, uh, Bible studies, etc., for their families, you know, their children, for, you know, addiction is a family disease. We all hear that, but until you're a part of a, of a family that struggles with addiction, you don't really fully understand what that means. And, and it is a family disease, and they all, we want to help it all. We want to help them all. Exactly. We want to be able to minister and help these families and these children to know that they can break the chains of addiction, that they can break this off and it stops here. We want to be able to help them do that. That, in my mind, is one of the best ways to, for prevention that there, that's out there, you know. We want to be able to reach out into our community and do that. And, we, and, and, and using this facility the way that we're planning to do so will enable us to do that. So I, I gave all of you guys kind of a, a, a packet of things there. A lot of this information I just shared with you is in there and more. I knew we, I didn't, you know, we're gonna have a lot of time to go over all that, but. So I just invite you guys to take a look at that. And then I, I ask you tonight that when you do, if you haven't already, when you do put in place the process to apply for this opioid abatement money, we really, really, really would like to know. We would like to know what you, what you want from us to qualify to apply for some of this funding because there's going to be some money there to be had and this is where they've directed us to come they said go to your physical court and uh, so anyway that's what we're doing tonight we're kind of starting this process with you guys i know it's kind of new to you all this money and and what it's been set you know, you know put put out there for but you know we're standing here we're doing it we're not talking about it we're doing it we're doing it we're seeing lives change every day right you know, and I'm just telling you guys, this is this is well spent money right here. It is. We appreciate um, everything you're doing there. It means a bunch. Because you know, in addition to, uh, we're, we have a reentry program here called ARCH that uh, Jimmy Cantrell and, and Georgia, they take care of. Yeah. And uh, I, I know they work with you, so. They're doing a super job, too. Yeah, all of you are. And I can't think of any mission that I'd like to see done more than this. Yeah. Let's, to, to do away with this plague that we've had, it's not going to be solved by law enforcement. It's not going to be solved by <coughs> way. We're going to have to do it with treatment and prevention. Yeah, absolutely. And so we appreciate what you're doing, and I'm sure you think anything that we see they would be able to help you with the will. So stay in contact with us. Yeah, we sure will. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, these guys have got jobs. You know, it's in your packet. But I you saw know, it in the packet. They yeah, were all working. They're all, you know, we're, that's, a, that's a big thing here. You know, I'm telling it's you, these big, guys are, they're contributing to the workforce right. that it's, we need so desperately bad. Right. And they really are doing that, and they're loving it. You well, know, it's that's, a great that's thing. One, you know? That is, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, uh, we've got to do an amendment to a uh, Rough River cleanup project. And basically, it was an old mission. If you here, you remember back uh, several months ago, we awarded those uh, bids from the clean out the river. Well, we forgot to get one of them in the me in the minutes, uh, and uh, in, or in our motion. I'm sorry, we forgot one to put one in our motion. I I had to clear that up real quick. It completed. <laughs> Uh, it, it, is. it was November 15th minutes. Uh, we had all of them in there, but we left out site 11 for $34,600 no, $34, from Kyle Addington for 700 feet. So we just need to clarify, put it back in, and authorize and write the check. You need a motion on that? Or? Yes. yes. And, that, and that action be retroactive from the date, November? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> 
<laughs> Motion by Larry Murphy. We found out we got the money for it. I'll second for second uh, by Jason. I'll second for discussion. The big difference in the money, the, the state, we were way off. The state paid the difference, and they came back with the. Yeah, this was done before we made, yes. before well, we did this. When they were all off, this is not from that motion. This oh, is from the previous okay. 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 Now, this is from that one. Yeah, yeah. this is from back there. And what mean we was off, Jason? What? Uh, no, well, and originally when the bids came in, we weren't going to get enough money, but then the state came back and said, right. yeah, then yeah, they, they found the money. money. Yeah. But this actually don't have anything to do with that. This was a omission okay. and a bid award when we was uh, ordered them all. Uh, we sorry, we just didn't let we left that one out of our margins that day. So, all in favor say aye. Aye. Pope like sound. Motion carries. Uh, Charlie's not back yet, so I'm gonna wait on him just a little bit. He had an emergency. Our communications tower went down for the fire department and all emergency services. So that, that's kind of important that we get that going. So I'm gonna skip on, and uh, we have a uh, resolution for a grant. Christina uh, is here from uh, representing Greta actually tonight. I was fixing to say Oceda, but she's actually here representing Greta uh, tonight. That's the uh, Bluegrass uh, Crossings Industrial Park, and they have applied for some money, and it's not going to cost the court anything, but we we have to approve the resolution for her to, and Jason to apply for the money. What should it be used for? Uh, we're going to do a road extension out at Bluegrass Crossings. We're going to extend that road to the cul-de-sac at the northern corner, and that way we can market the build ready pad a lot better. Basically, we just need your uh, support. Um, when you apply for this PDI grant, it's through the state. It's called Product Development Initiative. We have to have the support of our local <laughs> government, and they just want to see that to make sure, you know, that everything's fine. They're not stepping on anybody's <coughs> toes. Do you need that in the form of mark motion? Yeah. Or yes. Resolution number? 2023-23. How much is it for? About uh, between uh, $250,000 and $300,000. It's a matching grant, and Grid is going to pay it. Provide the match. Our match part is not through the county. It's we actually, actually don't yeah. have a match. It's the yes. credit. Yeah, we're not asking for any funds. We're mm -hmm. just asking for your approval. Make sure it's okay with y'all before we start applying for this. I'll make a motion to accept the motion by Jason Bullock on ordinance uh, 20. No, no, resolution. Resolution 2023-24. Yeah. Uh, second. second by Larry Murphy. Thanks, y'all. Is there any further discussion? Being none, <coughs> let's go ahead and roll call since it's a resolution. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. How long will it take to approve that, Judge? Do you know? Pretty, it'd be pretty quick. It won't take long. So they'll start on that pretty quick? Yes. Um, well, <coughs> since we can't do the Rough River, was there someone else here from NRCS going to talk about this project? Ryan and I are here. Oh, I'm sorry. Why don't you go ahead and give us updates since Charlie's not here to, to introduce you and get you started. Do you have a construction update? No. They haven't started any of the other jobs yet because of the weather. Um, they've got a couple that they're ready to move in on. They're just waiting on the rain to give them enough time to move in. Some of the sites are still flooded, so that's yeah. the other projects. So as, as Darren knows, we've been talking for years about Rough River in, in its entirety. I mean, we've been yeah. talking about the insufficiencies of uh, Rough River as a whole. How much is this going to do to alleviate that, all these projects put together? Or is it going to put us just back where we were before the tornado? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's at least going to have it back to that point. I, you know, I would hope that it would uh, help some of it. They're all not um, exactly on Rough River. Some of them are on tributaries yes. coming into it. Yeah. So it may help some flooding in some other areas. Um, but, you know, it, it should help at least get it back to that point, hopefully a little bit better. It will remove some blockages that uh, are holding back some, some water in areas and help clean that area <laughs> out, and hopefully it'll be able to flush itself out and give a better flow to Rough River and pass that. 
So because the money for this project was tied to the tornado, we were only able to work within the path of the tornado. Right. So, but for, for sure, we're at least back to the point we were before the tornado, maybe a little better. Yeah. Right, right. They can't remove sediment or anything from the channel. It's just right. taking debris out and disposing of it. Yeah. Uh, we would love to see this thing dredged, if that's still a word, all the way through Ohio County, <laughs> you know, for the we, full we length of the river. Do that. like that's our agency can't <coughs> do that. Okay. We understand the need and the, the need for it. Yeah. I uh, wonder where we would go to even start thinking about that. That would require some permitting, you know, so Division of Water or Corps of Engineers might be the first call to tell them like what you're thinking. Hey, I appreciate you answering that because I know that people have been asking, so that's... And unfortunately, that's, that's a pretty common thing with a lot of the waterways and tributaries in this part of the state. It's an uphill battle to get that done. I understand. Thank you so much. Um, next on the agenda was we had an ordinance on the all-terrain vehicles on county roads. Um, we're not going to be able to vote on that tonight. I'm going to talk about it just a little bit uh, because this is fairly new law and, for, and not very many counties have done it. And we've discovered that there's more steps we have to do before we actually even do a first reading. We have to advertise with maps on our county's uh, web page and we'll probably do it in the local paper as well um, and uh, and with uh, Dustin as well uh, so uh, we'll do that advertisement but first because of some it's got to have the roads name that we're going to do uh, we couldn't just say all oh, we got to look at them in their entirety and may want to take out some short lanes and that sort of thing and not include them. So as of now, we're going to send it back to committee. And Jason, I, are you the chairman of that committee? Yeah, that's what I was going to say is we can't because we got to publish the roads first. Then the committee. We have a whole list. Of, well, I've got a list of all the county roads. Now, we have some new people since we started this, and I've talked to them. And, and they're concerned. They wanted to look into the... Uh, they want to ask some questions with the committee too. So what I told them to do is if it's okay, next meeting at four o'clock, we're gonna have a at the next next court meeting, which is I don't know the day of that at four o'clock. Can you find April eleventh? April eleventh at four o'clock we're going to do a committee meeting at four o'clock in the old courtroom. It's open to the public. It's gonna be a committee meeting. Will they have questions we'll talk about? There are a few other things I would look into, like even have a trial period for six months. And then we would have to revisit it in six months to see how it's going, whether or not, you know, January 1st. And that kind of makes us look, go back and look at, is it going good, is it not going good, and we have to revisit it January 1st, something like that. So um, because of this step of publishing roads first, we didn't know that. We thought you do the ordinance and then publish the roads. We're going to have a committee meeting. Some of the new matches are going to be there, and we're looking at 4 o'clock on April 11 in the Old Port Ring, and it is open to the public. So. And uh, if you have any questions, call me. And I'm going to add Michael to it to help you a little bit. Yeah. And, and of well, the, we, we started this well. before the new court members came on. So. Yeah. We, we've advertised it, too, so everybody's welcome. Yeah. We're not going to leave anybody out, Larry, but if y'all want to come. Mm -hmm. And anybody in the public's welcome to come. And we're going to be out here. It's going to be the old, we're going to do the old courtroom. Court 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 if you don't know where the old courtroom and you're here, if you go down the hallway, there's a door right here. But if you go through it's right on your left. It'll, it'll say, it's it the same right meeting room there? Court it's so a court back. It's you go court past court the judges, it's the next door on the left. And, so, and, uh, and we do want to give it uh, all due consideration. So we're, but we've got to, uh, got to do a few things. We're not as far along as we thought we were. So we're going to back.
Mm -hmm. We want to look at a few things, look at some dates, and then um, been talking to people, just just trying to consider. I, listen, I don't drive an all-terrain vehicle or whatever side by side, but my philosophy is, hey, we need to at least look at it because if you're letting motorcycles and Amish buggies and if they have seat belts and they have turning signals and lights, really, what what's the difference? And it's it's a county road. We're not letting people drive on your property. We're allowing them to go on a county road if they have the, the sticker license, and that's kind of what we're looking into. But 4 o'clock, uh, April 11th, uh, if you want to come to the meeting, feel free to come. Thank you. Appreciate that, and uh, sorry that we, we really thought we was farther along than we were, but we found out we've got to do these other steps. Well, and even before that, I talked to a few of the magistrates, and I thought they, you know, they want to have some questions, and rightfully so, that's fine. And uh, folks that have uh, put in that they definitely don't want their lanes on it, we're, we're giving that list to the committee as well. Uh, next, I'm going to ask uh, a bow right. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to do a, a resolution first. Resolution for the golf course. So that's still bow right. And that's what's that need? The administrative code. Like, we need the administrative code. Oh, I'm sorry. Ordinance. I'm sorry. Let's do the administrative code. Okay, what happened? Uh, our, we, the admin code committee met, but fiscal court has to pass the amendment. We have to even have to have a second reading of it. And what it is, two incidents lately have happened. We had a bomb threat. It was close enough to, to, clo to closing time that everybody went home. Uh, and recently we had a severe weather tornado threat for this building. We are going to have 80 mile an hour winds. So I believe it, it was at 1.30, I sent everybody home. Uh, so what this is going to do, <coughs> it's going to give us the right to go ahead and pay those employees for that lost time when they leave of no choice of their own. If I gave them a choice that you can stay here right after the tornado or go home, then you know, then, then they would get paid. But I, if I say, no, everybody's leaving this building now, then they'll get paid. And that's happened twice lately, once for a bomb threat and once for a, uh, a, a severe weather threat. I mean, we're afraid it's going to blow the windows out of, uh, out of the building. Are we not a classified shelter? No. I mean, we got the basement in case the tornado would be the lowest point. But we don't. But this is... Uh, uh, this this uh, amendment would say the judge executive is allowed to order employees to leave work in cases of an emergency, example, tornado, bomb threat, or where the employee's presence in the building area puts them in imminent danger. If the employee is ordered to leave the area, then shall, they shall be paid as if they work the rest of that day. So I would like to add that as amendment to the administrative code. I'm on the administrative code meeting. I will second that. Well, okay. Yeah. I made the motion then and, and Jason seconded. Do you all have any questions? Uh, if, you're, if you're asking an employee to go home, <coughs> we should pay them. So. I made it. Jason seconded. Yeah. Morphe? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Pula? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. That passed. There will be a second reading of it at the next meeting. And in June, uh, the month of June only, any magistrate can bring, bring a suggestion to the committee for a ad, for an admin code update or change. If you ever read it and you really had an issue, you can take it to the committee yourself. You actually can take it to the court, but I would rather go to the committee first place. Um, in the month of June only, the rest of the time I have to make those motions. Uh, now we're ready for the uh, golf course changes in their ARPA grant. Resolution 2023-22. Bo, you want to explain what that does? Well, basically, we're not doing the uh, greens lower anymore because the, with, uh, the way the sales are now, it's two, three years out. so. I'm requesting that we transfer it to a 
purchase some golf carts. Uh, they're ready, and we can pick them up tomorrow with these funds. So <coughs> that's why I'm looking for the change in the yeah, funds. He's not asking for any new money for right. golf course. He's asking to change the carpet set. So, we do that for motion. Please, but motion by, by <coughs> Obama. Second no, by. No, no. I'm Martin sorry. Market McCann made that by. form of motion. A motion? Yes. yes. Okay. To pay the purchase order, I need the purchase order number in there for you, Ann. We just passed the resolution. Okay. Just passed right. the resolution. All right. Now, then I'll make the motion. Go ahead, right. second. To allow Ann to make a change to use the ARPA funds to be paying this new invoice. Okay. Go ahead, second. I'll second his motion. Second by Jason. I'm sorry, I thought it was you, Bo. Uh, Y'all sound a lot alike from through through Miranda. Uh, okay. Any other discussion? <laughs> Being nice, roll call. Morphew. Yes. McKenney. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Bennett. Yes. Johnson. Yes. But now then, we're looking for a report from Bo on how he's using. Is the parks uh, ARPA quality report, and I uh, want to ask his uh, Mr. Assistant to join. Best you care to give me like the standing ovation like the judge did you? I feel like left out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say you're the best looking park director right in the county? Just joking. So this is Tori Kinson. She's our event coordinator. She's been with us for a little while now. She served as a secretary with us. Since the ARPA money, we've put her on the event side of things. She still takes care of the office, and she does a good job. A um, couple of the things in the past couple of months, we've done a dog show, believe it or not. It's a pretty big crowd. Um, the tractor pulls, cowboy games is a big thing. It's getting a lot of attention. Uh, we're getting people in from everywhere to do that. Um, and she's been in contact with all these people that does this stuff. Um, let's see, the Boys and Girl Scouts clubs, they come every Saturday to meet at the fort with us, and so those are big things. <clears throat> the church softball leagues are starting back up. Soccer starts this week. Um, the clay pigeon shoots are every Sunday for $25 entry. You can shoot all day, so those are big things that anybody that can come out and shoot clay pigeons for $25 charge, that's it. Um, of course, we still are doing our airsoft wars. Uh, what that is, we've got soft pellets that they shoot each other with. Don't ask me why, but they do it. Um, also, uh, Jason Tierney and a few others we have contacted us. Um, they've been helping us do membership drives. Um, it's been a big help for us. Steve Seegers is in the pro shop with us now. We're seeing more memberships out there, more people get out there, so that's a big plus, and, and she's been in contact with them as well. This past month, we had a circus, and I think I've seen the sheriff there. I'm not sure that I've seen the sheriff there, but I don't know if he's Was he in one of the acts? He was a star role in the circus, I do okay. believe. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, this the past month we had a cattle beef show. Um, 4-H put that on, Gary Drew and them, so that drawed a lot of people to the park. And this past, last week, we had a, a world beagle hunt, which had a lot of people coming out to utilize our facilities as well as everything in Ohio County has to offer. Um, with that being said, here's some of the upcoming ones that we have in mind, or she does. I just, I just roll with the punches. Um, Easter egg hunt this Saturday. Larry, Larry, if you want to go, he's gone now. But anyways, I was going to say Larry can come out and do it too. So um, We have a coffee and donuts car show type deal. And I was talking to Michael earlier. Um, I think it's going to be a good idea to kind of get some businesses to get involved in that, to kind of do that every month. So. Uh, let's see, <coughs> Trucks and Treasures again, that was a pretty good hit for last year. A 5K color run, glow in the dark sc golf scramble. Um, and one of our county employees,
came to us about doing a farm animal auction, so I think we're going to try to get that set up as well. Jason, go find your auctioneer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, let's see. We're going to try to do a kids' day camp. Uh, we a grief camp. We realize that there's grief that kids involved and stuff, so we're going to try to get that set up as well. Jason's uh, got the suicide awareness walk going to be coming up this summer too. I don't know the date on it. It's usually September. That's yeah. So, so those will all be coming up. Let's see. Uh, we're going to have a free fish day at the golf course. And uh, looks like flag football for adults and kids to come out and participate, kickball. And I think, let's see. Oh, yeah, the Good Sam's Club will be coming back as well to come in. We're camping and stuff, so we've got a lot more people coming out to camp. So, Sounds great. Got any questions? When's the day of that car show? I have no idea. I need to go ask that one. Well, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Yeah. Our truck's invited. You can come, Michael. Yes, you can bring your seat in. Yeah. Y'all ain't got nothing. I appreciate you all, and that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Need that makes an appointment to the library board. Uh, they've, uh, John Cashin, I put his name up and then roll call up the appointment to the li library board. He's already currently serving and we're going to put him into a new, uh, to a new uh, term. So, roll call. full-time job this is an open position we're not asking for any more funds or anything a full-time position at the park at the rate of 14.39 per hour uh, effective uh, 3.26 and it's, uh, at, it's like I said his name is David Bullock and it's not the same David Bullock that already works for us I, I, not really for me either. So, <coughs> Roka. Marcy. Sorry, did it again. McKinney. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Bennett. Yes. Johnson. Yes. And we have for a substitute driver for the senior center, uh, Kenny Melton, uh, part time, oh. eleven fifty three per hour. Uh, starting immediately, 326. Uh, and uh, any roll call on that? Morphew? Yes. McKenney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Yeah, we, we closed all the roads in 5th District. <laughs> Good. Mm. Won't have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, committee reports. Do we have any? Has any committees met? We know the. We've called on a couple there, but has any committees met since the last court meeting? We know they will be. Uh, next, next meeting. Next. But I'll take this time to pick up a couple things. Uh, one, that we need to remember in our prayers the passing of uh, Chuck Hagen. Uh, lawyer here uh, for many, many years, and I doubt if any of you's ever had a title done on the property that his name don't show up somewhere back on your day. He's been doing it for many, many years, and he was also a helicopter pilot in war in the Vietnam War and flew many missions there. So Chuck Hagen will be uh, missed. 
So and, he, uh, he passed, I'm sorry, did he pass away this morning? I don't no, know. Saturday. Saturday. It just ended up in Saturday today. Okay. Okay. Um, and another thing I wanted to say is I thank the elected officials that came, our, uh, our mayor of Fordsville and, and some of the city councils here. We appreciate you guys are here. Uh, And uh, our sheriff's here. We're glad he's here. He was already called out by the park director, but he's here. And I appreciate that. And anybody, all of the rest of you that here is really appreciated as well. And also keep in your mind and prayers the uh, victims of the school shooting in Nashville. Uh, you know, that's not all that far from home. So we need to always be mindful of that. Uh, I do think we are prepared better than most communities in our area for something like that. But, uh, we, you know, we're, we're not immune, we're not exempt from it. So, uh, just keep all those folks in your mind on your, on your prayers. And uh, would uh, um, First District Master Michael McKinney have any comments or questions or requests? No further questions or comments at this time. Thank you. No, not Chase. this time. Bo. Uh, no, not this time. I'll just uh, throw something out there. Anybody that's interested in the uh, code enforcement, if you want to do some digging, KRS 100.131, read that, and that'll give you some idea of some things be kind of interesting if people want to read that. That's all I have, Judge. Okay. Justin? No, I don't have anything. Thanks, Judge. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody from the public got anything for the uh, benefit of the body? If not, we'll stand with Jerry. Judge, Jerry, Jerry does. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. Right. Uh, yes, this UT, or uh, all four-wheeler ATV. Yeah, it's trying to get past. I'm totally against that. I, we've had so much trouble with the ATVs waking us up at night, flying through there. State police come through there and finally got stopped. It's been peaceful there for a long time. And I do not want to see this start again. I know these folks with good intentions want to start this, but I am just know it's going to be bad for us. <coughs> we appreciate it. And also, we will actually put, uh, and we'll put in requests for those that have requested not to be on their lane. So that will be there too. And you're welcome also to come back to the uh, April 11th meeting at Fowler over here across the hall. Oh, and by the way, uh, Amish buggy has never woke me up in the night for a long time. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I well, I will say that there is a time limit in there. Yeah. yeah. But so it won't be in the middle of the night that they should be legally. There is a hour before sun up and hour before after sundown. Well, how many people, some good folks is going to do that first, but you're going to have the others that don't. And uh, Larry, I want to thank you for returning my phone calls. I want you to thank you for sticking by us in our district. Thank you. Thank you for listening. So, well, thank you all for coming. Anybody else got anything? More people need to start coming to our meetings and see what goes on. Well, I was happy to have the good group we had tonight. Uh, and uh, I forgot to say Landon's here tonight, too. I don't know how I missed him. He's here. And Arthur, our PBA, was here for a little while. So I do really appreciate this. Uh, yeah, and I see another sorry rascal from the 5th District sitting back there. We have two of them. <laughs> Uh, I think you meant Mr. Crowder. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Barrow is back there, too. Mr. Barrow. He, he's <laughs> yours, too. Uh, well, if that's it. This meeting's adjourned. We'll be back here on the April 11th.